But I'm Diego Nap. I'm, I, I, I work at the University of Aveiro in the Department of Mathematics in Portugal. And this is my, my research unit of research. And today uh, I, was, I was asked by, by Carmen to talk about this network coding, which is a, a hot topic in information theory, which is a kind of the future of information theory. But I, I thought that my, it this is not a, a conference uh, of information theory and coding theorists. So I will do it very simple, starting from scratch, for very simple, so you can understand the idea behind this new network coding. So I really is, will, would like to start with the very basic idea of the area of coding theory, which is uh, um, this, uh, uh, this is a, a technique, a mathematical technique that uses a lot of algebra. That's why there are a lot of mathematicians there. That tries to correct errors that appear in the transmission. So I send a message, and during the, the transmission, some errors occur. Or if I, uh, even if I store some, some, some file in a, then due to physical, uh, um, physical uh, failures, we may lose some information. So coding theory is the, the art of uh, sending and storing information in such a way that if we lost some part of the message, we are still able to recover the original message. So this is the idea of the area. Let's see if this works. It goes very slow. Uh, okay, so this is the structure. So I will is explain a little bit the idea of the area, what is typically done in in, in you could find in any in, in any textbooks, classic textbooks. Then I will explain what we do, which is convolutional codes, which is a, a very particular class of codes, which are more involved than classical block codes. Then I will talk. I will focus in something what we do, which is to try to focus on one of the properties of the code, which is the distance. I will also motivate why we want distance in the code. And then at the end, I will explain this new fashion hot topic in coding theory, which is network coding. Like this. It's tall. OK. So we want to store some, 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 some bits which is, uh, we can think of it as a sequence of zeros or ones. So, data get corrupted, so if we send a one, maybe we get, receive a, a zero or otherwise. So, what happens when this occurs, which occurs all the time? So, how can we detect, well, a very simple example is the ISBN, uh, that you can find in the books. They have uh, some, some uh, error correcting codes. So if you go to a store and you buy a book, then a each book has an as a, as a international standard book number. And then if some of the, 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 the numbers of the books are wrong, or you read it and you read instead of five, you read a four, then <laughs> the machine will immediately uh, detect there was an error. In the book, and this book, uh, the number is wrong. In such a way that you don't get the price of the uh, encyclopedia if you're buying a book or different books. So this is a way to protect the information, the number. So you don't get the price when you buy a book. If some number is wrong, you don't get the price of another book. So it's a way to protect this, this, this information. And this is, this is done like like they, 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 they select the numbers, the first nine numbers randomly, but the last one has to satisfy an equation. So if one of the bits of the number is wrong, then this number will not fulfill the equation and then we'll get the, an error message that there is some number that is wrong. So this number is the sum of the previous one. So if the one of the previous one is wrong, then the equation will not be satisfied, and then we'll get a message that something is wrong. So this is a very, uh, the most elementary example of a code. 
So now, this is a, what is a code? What is a, uh, this is a, our mathematical elements and code is uh, um, among all the possible uh, let's think about a message as a vector of 0 over 1 so <coughs> a code is a, is, a, is a set of possible vectors so imagine we want to send this message of three bits for instance 110 one, so what we do in coding theory is we take this message, the original message, and we do it big, big, bigger and add redundancy on the message in such a way that if some part of the message is lost, we will use the redundancy in order to retrieve the original message. How do we do that? This is, a, for instance, in this case, 3. We multiply this vector by this, this large matrix and then we, instead of sending 3 bits, we will send 6 bits and we will multiply this vector by this matrix so we will be the sum of the first row and the second row and this, the third will not be and then we will get for instance if we send this message th if this is the message we want to send then we encode it to a larger one with redundancy we will send this one if we want to send this one we will send this one so a larger with redundancy this is the basic idea. So, how many possible code words and elements in the code? So, possible, how many do we have? How many code words do we have? So, all possible three elements is two by two, two times by two times, eight. Only eight. Only eight. So, we have these eight possible code words. Okay? So, Imagine this is very simple. If we have, we are normally a finite field, and engineers like it F two. So we have a two to the eight, six. We have six, six coordinates, right? And in these six coordinates in F two, which are many many possible combinations of vectors of length two in F two, but we have only eight possible which are in the code. So imagine we want to send, like the previous one, uh, the first one, eh? one, one, zero. So we encode it through the matrix. This G is the matrix, the encoder. We will get this one, this code word, that, that means the other one uniquely. So if I receive this one, then I have to go back, and there is a unique code word to give that that gives this one okay you agree if i want to send like if i want to send this one then this one uniquely is inject is an injective map because this is, is a full row rank matrix so if i want to send this then i encode it to this one i send this code word and if I receive this code word, then I receive this code word, I see that this is in, in my code, and then I know the one that the, the, the other ones wanted to send. But normally, as I said before, you don't receive this one, but there is some error, and then you get another one, which is not the same. For instance, imagine instead of this one, you get instead of this one you get a zero so you don't get something that is possible so you know there has been an error now you have to look for the closest the most similar one to the one you sent so you receive this one you see this one and then you have to look for the closest one the one that is similar to the, to, to to one that is feasible that is in the code and how do we measure this closeness with this metric, which is the weight of the difference of the code? So imagine this code has a very particular property, that the difference of any of these elements is at least three. You will not find the combinations of two that give you some, something that, has, that differs more than, th than less than three positions. So they, they somehow they are very different. They are very separated. 
in such a way that if I receive something that is similar, that only one bit has changed, they will be, because all these differ in at least three positions. This one, this one with all of them in this metric. They differ in three positions, all of them. All of them, they differ in three positions. So if I get a vector with one error, so one bit, one, one bit that is, is wrong, then I will, I will be close just to one, because they differ in three positions. So then if I get this, it will be very easy to detect and correct and get, okay, it's not, this is not the one, there will be, there are errors, but this is the one that is closest, so this is the one that he wanted to send, so if I get a zero here, then there will be, this will be the bit uniquely code word closest to one, and then I got the one, one, zero. So this is the basic idea of coded theory. So I can detect and correct one error. So we have a vector space, we have a metric, and, and the goal is, is very clear. This is the basic idea, the first introduction uh, book in any code world. Of course, is the, is coding theory is used to protect information, which is different with cryptography. With many, th many people uh, um, confuse. Cryptography has to do with security, and coding theory has to do with, with protection of information. And it's everywhere. Coding theory is everywhere, mobiles, computers, everything you want to store or to send, you need to use coding theory. And of course there is a lot of deep algebra using this, and so many mathematicians work on this. So mathematically speaking, we have a vector space over a finite field. This is our mathematical object, which is something like this, as I explained. Some, the row span of a constant matrix. So now imagine we want to store, um, or we want to send a video or a, a file. So normally you cannot send the whole file in once. So you normally cut in pieces, in packets, and start to send the packets. So imagine you have a picture and you want to send it or store it. So you, first you cut it in pieces. That will be one piece. That will be the one, and you send the first one, and then you send the other. One. You encode it through this matrix and you send it. The other one, get it, detect the error, decode and see. And then the other one, and then the other one, and then the other one. And you see, this is the sequence of the information that is encoded through this matrix I explained. And then you get a sequence of packets of information and then you get the, the information. This is what is called blow code. Because the one, the one information is encoded independently of the other information. So I encode this one through G, I encode this one through G, and they are independent. I got it, encode it, and send it. Code it, and code it. But things can be... So I can, I can rewrite mathematically the sequence also as a polynomial in an in a obvious way, a sequence in a polynomial. And I, this will be the vector sent at the instant zero, this will be the vector sent at instant one, and so on. So what I actually say is the file is a polynomial, and then I receive, which is this a polynomial, a Laurent series or a formal power series or whatever object, mathematical object you want to work with. And then you receive another polynomial, which is the same, but it's I encode it through the matrix G. Of course, there you can, this is a mathematical aspect, you can consider power series, Lorentz series, polynomials, rational functions, rents. It depends a, a little bit on the applications you want to, 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 you are interested. And of course, mathematically, this should be because some are rings, some others are, are, are fields, some ones are Ethereum rings. It depends the mathematical properties. But now we get Okay, well, then this, this guy a long time ago said, why don't we instead of multiplying by the constant matrix G, which is the encoder, why don't we do it polynomial? So why don't we encode it in such a way that 
that is also dynamic. And this is what the idea that originated what is called convolutional codes, which is a very particular class of blow codes, and this is the one that we work because are mathematically more involved. Why they are? So this is the blow code case. I have this these packets of my, of my picture, one, one, and they are encoded independently, eh? through G encode. But in the convolutional case, then I multiply by an encoder which is not a constant matrix, it's a polynomial, so it also depends, evolve a long time. So you see at the time instance one is just, you multiply a polynomial vector by a polynomial matrix, you will a polynomial vector, and this is, will be the, the vector you receive at instant one, at zero, this will be the vector receive at in instant one and so on. And you see that there is a convolutional. So at time instant one, you, what you receive does not depend only on the things that you are sending at instant one, but also the previous one and so on here. So somehow there is a notion of memory in the encoder. So you encode the things depending on the previous things that you, everything becomes more, more um, woven in such a way. And of course, as you can imagine, is more involved. Let's see. Okay. Uh, so now, what do we have? Mathematically speaking, what do we have? So if we consider, this is really depends on the things that you consider. I consider here rational functions. If I consider rational functions, then my code, convolutional codes, is a uh, 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 dimension, uh, um, a vector space of FDN. So this is my mathematical object. Normally, what we do, we consider polynomials, which not not rationals, which is a field. We consider a, a polynomial, which is a ring. Then I don't get a, 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 a um, subspace. I get a, a module of the polynomial ring which changed mathematically, the approach is very different, it's much complicated, but I will not get into the details here. But at least we, we, we know the object we want to work. This is our mathematical object, we want to study this in such a way that I can correct as much um, errors as possible. And these errors, I explained, depends on the distance. If the, these code words are very uh, far apart from each other, then I can correct more errors. So the goal, which I, I think is here. Ah. So an example, so I will explain this later, but the goal will be to construct this uh, convolutional code in such a way that the distance, so the error correcting capability of the code is as large as possible. So this is an example. Imagine this is very simple because it's a matrix with just one row. And uh, I want to encode a sequence of vectors. In this case, it's, also, it's not a vector, it's a number, but the idea is the same. So I, I write this sequence of my, my picture, my sequence, in a polynomial. That will be this one. And then I just multiply my polynomial by my, my encoder and I get another uh, polynomial vector in this way. And this is the way how I would do it. And, and if, you, if you go from, from the polynomial to the, to the vector case, then I would get this sequence will produce this sequence through this encoder. So, uh, this is the polynomial uh, way to see it, that module theoretical approach, but this is, these convolutional codes are used everywhere, even in, in your mobiles, but, but there are many points of view that you can look at these convolutional codes. Computer scientists will look at this as a shift registers, which, um, which is kind of a machine, very easy to implement, that's why they like it, these codes very much. <coughs> and and it, it, the same sequence that I explained before, seen as a computer scientist, we will encode it with this 
uh, machine, which is called shift register in this way. So these are the sequence. It will get into the machine in this way. So this goes inside and this will speed one one because we'll get one plus zero plus zero is one, one plus zero is one. Then this one goes, this is a shift to this one and then we get another one and then another one and another one. And this is the way how I encode information to a shift register. This is how, a, a, um, how it's actually implemented. Another way to look at these convolutional codes is, is you can also represent this as a, as a system theoretical way and you explicitly uh, right, this is the implementation of, of this machine. And as you see, what, what you get here, which is the encoded, depends on the things that are getting in the machine and also depends on the memory, on the state of the machine. So we have the notion of memory here. Okay, this I skip. This I skip because it's too so much. Okay, historical. This I explained is, uh, was uh, motivated by Elias, but nobody understood how these co codes uh, work until Forney, which is the god of coding theory, uh, explained a little bit the mathematics behind these convolutional codes. And they became because you have to have a machine, you have a machine to encode, this is very simple through resist, but you have to have a machine to decode. And as you can imagine, this is very complicated because the information is woven and then it's very difficult to decode. It's not as easy as before. So it was completely useless until the Viterbi algorithm appeared and then became uh, widely used in communications. However, uh, okay, so, so a, a wonderful and the whole sequence, and even if I cut it in pieces, is that too technical? These are some 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 history historical remarks about these codes, these wonderful codes. So <coughs> uh, one thing that is important, these codes will never exist over the binary field. That was it was not studied by engineers, but we mathematicians said, let's do let's take large fields. And then with if we take large fields, then I can achieve this distance. But with the price that I have to work with large field, which is computationally more costly. But okay, so in 99, there was conjectured the existence of these two wonderful classes of codes. Then uh, Roxana, Ismail and Dash, they show that they exist, but they didn't provide any, any concrete construction. They proved with, uh, with, with um, some um, uh, uh, algebraic geometry, they prove that these codes exist over a sufficiently large field, but they didn't give any concrete construction. Then they show a, a, a concrete construction in 2005. Uh, in 2006, sorry, in 2005, they didn't provide any. They, they pro the existence, but not the construction. In 2006, they provide the construction create construction for some parameters. Hudson proved that, uh, that exists the both types of MDAs and strong MDAs, both at the same time. And we and Roxanne Barandax show a concrete constructions that they exist and they are can be co built in this way. But of course, we ask for extremely large field size. Of course, engineers don't care because they say, what can I do with such a large field? I cannot do any computation. But we, give, we gave a concrete construction um, of, of a strongly NDS and MDS. 
There is also works like this, also some in, in Salamanca, in, in, in US, the work, maybe a single. I don't want it to take too technical. Uh, okay, uh, this I passed because what what I wanted to say here is is the idea of how how you can build. What do you have to build mathematically to obtain these wonderful codes? And everything boils down to the construction of this toplet matrix. So the pro mathematical problems is I need to find this A0 is in this structure over a finite field if you can do it that would be great in such a way that the, all the minors here are different from zero and this apparently is a very hard problem people have been thinking the last I don't know seven years or something and we cannot come up with, with constructions of these matrices over small fields and, and, and of course, you have to take the minors that are not trivially zero. If, uh, of course, if I get here uh, 2 by 2, 0, 0 will be zero. But if we get something that could be possible in not zero, it has to be non zero. And they show that they exist, and they have many examples, but not general construction. So this is, remains an open problem. And if you can do that, if you can do this build set of metrics, then you can build uh, this wonderful convolutional code. But nobody can do it so far. Apparently it's possible. So these are examples, concrete examples, that over not very big field size you can build this and you can check that these are super regular matrices. So you can, but again there are uh, particular examples. We don't have a general construction. This is maybe far too technical. You will get even bored with this. So historical remarks, in the pro code case for MDS, this is easy, you just have to construct Cauchy matrix and Van der Waals matrix and they will give you a blow code which is wonderful MDS. In the convolutional case, you have to get this toplet matrix which is more difficult. And only actually two types of construction exist, one given by Joachim Rosenthal with this, but requires a very large characteristic and one we gave that requires, you see, the size of this is alpha to the power of 2 to the power of n is far too large, but exists. So the main problem is to come up with constructions of super regular methods. Okay. I go fast. Okay, this, this I will skip. This is the idea how we can decode. Okay, let's go to the idea of the modern communications. This was 2008, it was uh, something was revolutionary in the field. They said, now we live in a world of networks. So I don't send you a message to you or a store something. I send it to the Wi-Fi, which is a huge network in the internet, gets into the internet, the routers start to combine packages, and then you receive the message. But this is not, not point to point. There is a network. This is something new. So the, the theory has to change because we send things over the networks, not point to point. So how would be the case? How can we transmit in a, into a network? Not point to point to a network. This is something pretty new, pretty revolutionary. Actually, it, it has not been implemented. But theoretically, is the best way to transmit over the networks. Yeah. And this came this idea of linear random network coding. And the idea is the following, it's very simple. Uh, and I will explain it here. I will explain here the idea very fast. This is always explained with the same example, which is called the butterfly.
So. This is a, a B and D, let's say. So imagine I want to send the packets A and B to the source S and T. Right? So normally what you would do, and it's actually what, how it works today, is you send the packages here. You send A here and B here. So let, let, Source S and T. So at time instance, they didn't receive nothing, nothing, nothing. Time instance two, this node receive A B, S receive A, and T receive B. Okay. So at time instance two, S receive A and B receive B. A time instant three, this has to select to send A or B. Let's suppose send A. So this arrives A and here arrives another A. So in this case, T has received A and B and another A. So still S doesn't have everything. Then you have to wait another time and then we we'll send B and B, B and B. And now they are both happy. And it took four times. Now with random linear network coding, which is actually give you the idea how this works. S and T. So here at time instant one, I send A and B. So exactly the same. I don't receive anything. Now at time instant two, this receive A and this receive B and this receive A and B. Okay? So this is happy with A and this is happy with B. Now at time instant three, here is the difference. In, instead of choosing one package and send it, he sends very clever, sends A plus B and H plus B. And then they are both happy because S can get from here A and B and also T can guess doing some sort combination A and B. So this I don't have to wait until time four. So the idea is if I can very clever combine in the, in the routers, in the nodes, and make combination of things in the networks in a very clever way, then the, what they call a throughput, the, the quantity of information I can send through the network, achieve the maximum, the capacity of the channel. So it's the best way to send information. Again, it's a bit theoretical because you need a very large finite field. But it was proven that this is the best way you can send information. This is a little bit of example. So, what is important here is the idea that before I send each vector independently, but here, no. Here I send combination of packages. I combine things. So what is important here, if I don't get any errors, is, is um, so, okay, uh, okay, this is a bit technical. So I I each, each element can be seen as a vector, but then the network will do computation. He explains here. So the packages A, B gets into the network, they get uh, many combinations. If we can see if this as a row, then you get many rows and then combination of the rows. So it will be like the vector space. You will get combinations of vectors. Not the vectors, as before I send you a vector and you receive a vector. Now I send you many vectors and you receive combination of these vectors. Okay. 
So what it remains the same, if, if there is no errors, I send you vectors and you receive combination of vectors. So if there is no errors, I send you a vector space of my vectors and you receive an, a, the same vector space combined, but the vector space will remain the same if no errors occur. Okay? So I don't send vectors, I send vector spaces. This is a revolutionary idea that uh, appeared in 2008 and there is thousands um, of citations and everybody is uh, working on this area. So uh, mathematical can be seen of course as a many as a projected space. But now the metric has to change because I don't send you vectors, I send you vector spaces. So before we, we were wanted to see how one vector differs from the other, it was easy, we see the number of of, of entries that differ, that they are different. If they have many similar, they are very close. If they have many different, they are very far apart. Here, the vector space, the metric is, is done with the dimension. So, two vector space differ, is the metric is given by this, who is the formula. And this is actually a metric, can be shown, and then is the way how we can construct. Uh, okay, this is too technical again. This is too technical again. So, what I want to construct before it was a, a, a matrix, a code with many things fall apart. Here is the same, but the code words are vector spaces. So, I want to construct a code, so a set of vector spaces that they are very fall apart. They are the distance between these vector spaces with these matrix is very big. So, I can correct many errors. Of course, this is very much complicated than the normal case. Oh, this is a bit... Okay. Again, we have a bound on the distance of the rank metric, because this metric is called rank, which is very similar to the normal case. We have, again, codes that achieve this wonderful upper bound, that is, they are called maximum rank distance, are called capitolin. And this is an example, but maybe it's, it's too, too, even the sample is too trivial, maybe it's too technical. So again, we have how to construct these codes. I will explain. Okay, so what I have explained so far. I have explained, blow codes, I send you a vector, you receive a vector. Then I if I want to send you a file, I cut this file and send you, I encode this, encode this. This is blow code. I explained that you can do it sequentially. You can take this sequence of vectors and do it convolutional and, and m plug it into this machine that I explained, chuk -chuk 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 -chuk, with memory, and then this is convolutional codes. Blow codes with memory, with a machine that interleave. Now, what is done in this area of network coding with these vector spaces is blow code. So I have a set of, of packages. Packages are rows. I have a vector space and I send this vector space. They make combination. You receive a vector space. Now, how can we, how can we do this idea convolutional? So how can we interleave this sequence of vectors and do it convolutional rank metric codes. This is something very new and very little has been done in this area because it's very new. And the idea is we send, uh, uh, but the idea is very similar. We send a vector space, we send another vector space, but that depends on the previous things that I have sent. So the idea is the same, mathematics are very different, but the idea is that I can use the network several times and in, in impose a redundancy interrelation, in, in interrelation between each shot, each time instant that I use the network. This is actually the first paper, but it was a conference paper, very small, and they didn't do much, but they they talk about the, the general idea. And then these, these guys from Canada and from Germany, they started to work on this idea. But the idea is that, uh, is that, um, that it, it seems very promising idea to use for streaming applications. 
because in streaming, if you want to uh, a live video, football match, whatever, is something that has this structure that you want to send something sequentially. Uh, let's see. As I say, this 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 idea of convolutional code with networks uh, is an idea that has not been is very uh, unexplored. Ah, okay, this is uh, maybe too technical because I, I will have to finish. The, the distance, as I said, this rank distance for the block code case, if you do it convolution, we do a polynomial, it's the same with sum the rank distance of each coordinate of the polynomial. They, they gave some elementary constructions of these codes. And the problem is how to con construct these nice codes, convolutional codes, rank distance codes. This is an open problem, difficult, but uh, will be very rele relevant. And I will give just two, two motivations to conclude the, the talk. Yeah. Okay, this was, uh, uh, um, I don't know if you know, this in, in Canada, in Banff, is an institute of mathematics in the middle of the mountains, just to study one hot topic. And this one hot topic was streaming applications using convolutional, or co co convolutional was one of the ideas they use here for streaming applications. So you want to watch a movie and then you do this. Another one, another, and with this I finish, is to store. How do, if we want to store something in a network sequentially, that would be actually have exactly this, the things. I want to do it convolutional because it's streaming and, and I want to use it in, in a network. So I need to use rank distance. And this, of course, this is, motiva this is motivated by, by fast-growing demand on, on storage. And the storage get, uh, gets failures, and then I need to store. And when I want to do it sequentially, then there will be a, a, a need to construct these nice convolutional codes with rank metric. And that's it. These would be the two main uh, uh, applications of this rank metric, these modern convolutional codes for this. And this is all. This is all. Done. You, you said that there are a lot of applications. Can you tell us? These two would be the, the, the most common, just to, to send something that you want to send in a streaming and through a network, then, because if it's streaming, you will need to see this convolutional thing. It would be very nice to do it convolutional because of this machine, the information enters and goes very fast. So you want codes to use convolutional structure. And if you use networks that combines in root that makes combinations, then you want to do it in this way, using this metric, run metric, in such a way that you construct these, these sequential codes, convolutional codes, with very large distance, rank distance, in such a way that you send something sequentially over a network, then you can correct as much package errors as possible. Another was uh, a storage. If you want to storage uh, a picture in Facebook, what they do normally, eight years ago, you, you upload a, a picture in Facebook, they will do three copies. And if one gets wrong, they will have two more extra copies, one to give it to you, and the other one to make the third copy again and be saved. So they have to store three copies of your picture. But this is very inefficient. This was very easy 10 times ago when, when there is no much storage need. But now, the, 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 the growth of the, the storage we need is exponential. It becomes very inefficient. So what they do is they use error-correcting codes. They cut your, 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 um, your picture in, cut, and add redundancy with error-correcting codes, but just a little bit. And they, they, they plug these pieces of your picture in many servers. See, one server gets wrong, then you still have your picture in other servers with this little redundancy, 
and then you don't need much storage to, to have your pictures saved, like resilient. So sending it in, in streaming and story, storage will be the two main applications. But of course the mathematics are difficult and we work with large finite fields that the engineers don't like, so we have to make an effort, mathematicians, to make it like appealing for engineers, which is hard, but it's hard. Okay.